Imanjen guaraka Sias kangku Aishi maishum Jenak masepule Tapi kami kawadnan Now in the 50s when plans for the dam were being thought of, uh, the best sites were in the Ambuklao and Binga area in Benguet. And um, at the time, there were uh, communities that were affected by the creation of the dam. So um, rightly, the government started expropriation proceedings and proceeded to pay off the, the families involved. Uh, he later realized that, you know, monetary compensation in projects like this isn't, you know, just enough. In 1953, my first teaching was in this community of Ambuflao. It was a very fertile land, all rice field. It can support the whole community within the area. This community is surrounded with wide rice lands. That is why it is called the rice granary of Bukut. That field is where our income or livelihood derives. Then, but because of the dam, uh, our native rice, what we call kintoman rice, the red one rice, it disappeared because we, where will we plant those rice that we owned before? They want the people not to fight against the government because this national power is a semi-controlled government corporation. Apparently, one of the one of the commitments was uh, that families who were displaced would be given land elsewhere. Uh, these families were were told that they would be given land in Isabella, but they find themselves all the way in Palawan. No support, financial support for them to be resettled. <laughs> I think some issues is that they were just told to go there, resettled at their own. <laughs> no, no financial assistance. Almost everybody resettled themselves just above the dam. Like us, we resettled there that area without uh, financial help from the company. She told us that we will be, we will be given uh, school, uh, roads, electricity, and so many promises. Uh, Sixty years hence, the immediate communities are actually still without power after building a hydroelectric power plant uh, in the area. They're still without power or their power is not reliable. When 
the my parents were able to negotiate with those uh, people who are being assigned to drive those people out there uh, they try to negotiate that all the materials that is uh, materials of that house should also be taken uh, taken so that they have something to put again on the other side but alas they did not uh, grant or they just drive them away and then they push their house they bulldoze that so that is one that they cannot really uh, they, they cannot really forget that is the saddest part of their life the indigenous people's thinking was this land is ours it's ours and the reason why we are poor and indigent is because you took it away from us so the demand was give us back the land uh, they, they consider some of the lands there as very sacred this is where they bury their dead the land that we negotiated was already our own land it's an area owned by the the country and it should be managed properly for national development the ethnic group there is are the Ibaloys. They, they are the Ibaloys, the uh, one of the uh, majority ethnic groups in Benguet. You, know, you also have the Kankanes, the Kalanguya. But the Ibaloys, they are very, um, uh, they hold sacred the, the, their ancestors. And they, they believe that there is, uh, that honoring the dead, honoring your ancestor, actually uh, guides you towards a better uh, future. No? If you don't honor them, then you don't succeed in life. You don't also, uh, you don't go forward or move forward in your life. All the graveyards were were transferred. That's the they go, they goes with the families that are settled. The graveyard also were transferred. All the graves were already transferred. The other. Uh, under our house. Do you know that part of the just compensation was actually compensation for having to, to dig up the, the, the dead? One of the old man here, that Solano, is all used to go there and complain, but they don't hear him. And that makes our anger grow and grow because they don't they don't answer what we need so where will we where will we get our own food if all the mountains belong to them we lost our farms we lost our rice fields if you are me if you are in my shoes i think until now you will also be crying because we do not have any means of livelihood now. Uh, the families living there, uh, their cultural and tradition were destroyed. The people there lived through subsistence farming and all of a sudden it's gone. This is the area where the Ambukla village was. This was covered, uh, this was dumped in uh, the water rise at, on, uh, in 1955. The rice fields is submerged. The whole community was covered with water. Yes. Covered with water. If you see the picture, which was now submerged. There's a deep sense of blaming in these people that they are in this position because of the government, which is embodied by the National Power Corporation. So therefore, their anger was really directed at the National Power Corporation. It hurts. It hurts in the sense that the families were separated after the construction of this dam. Before I am holding a big anger because of what happened. We are not being heard. They blame an NPC for for the disruption of their lives. They stop 
talking to one another and then eventually it got to a point where they were afraid of one another so they said the only way we could deal with these people was to go to court that was the only place where they felt they were safe if it's a government entity operating that we could not really make much the municipality, the province of Benguet, they could not really make uh, much from whatever taxes due them. But if it's a private company, then we welcome it very much. I read the newspaper that they are going to bid out these two dumps, and I was really happy about it. Our vision for the company is actually to, to be the, the leading renewable energy provider in the Philippines, and um, we can, we'll, we'll be doing this through excellence in our processes, innovation, and, um, and developing the communities where we operate. So it's, it's inherent in our, in our values that uh, um, CSR is embedded in our process. You have to be there, you have to communicate, Sit down with them and and and, and really have uh, and they have to feel that you're sincere and, and we are sincere. Um, as I said, um, there's there's no other way to do it. We we cannot deny that we did not actually give full support immediately. We made to sit with them. We we came up with the interaction. We exchanged information. So we put in our mind that let's see what will happen. Uh, they came and then they explained to the people uh, what would be what would be their uh, project, what are they going to do, uh, what are they going to do with existing dams. So they consulted with the people. So is uh, of course in a consultation there would be reactions, and there will be some positive and negative reactions. Uh, the the people uh, were aware of this. The promises because they know that the promises can be, bro uh, be can be broken the emotion that and the wisdom that he imparted during a general assembly of the community was so much that people were really nodding their head you know i I've, I've been here for the last 60 years i've heard all the promises i've heard all the failed uh, failed promises uh, those things that you your your sweet tongues he lumped us uh, with all those other companies your sweet tongues uh, uh, told us uh, promising the heaven promising everything only for you uh, only to construct the dam and after you have constructed the dam you left us and you did nothing uh, to improve our lot I told him I told him maybe you you were just uh making a monkey business on us. I, I, I have said that word to them. Please do not, do not emulate, do not follow what the NPC had been doing to us in the first time in the, in the, in the construction of the dam. Uh, we have interviewed people who said that every time they walked the bridge between uh, in the dam, they would look at the land and tears would readily flow in their eyes and say, if we had this land, we would have been better off, and our children would be better off. The name itself, uh, social responsibility, sounds like a requirement, but um, we believe it's it's uh, um, it gives a social license to, to to operate in the in um, in in the areas where we are. Legal license is something on paper, right? But social license is um, is acceptability from the people, from the um, government officials from the NGOs, from, from everyone. To me, it's being welcomed by, by, by the people, and then when, when you meet people, they, are, um, they, they feel good that they've met people from, uh, from our organization. The Aboitis group got financing for this uh, purchase from the World Bank. But in the process, the claimants wrote, telling them don't lend money to the Aboitis to purchase the power plant because of this, 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 this. This hasn't been addressed. As part of the World Bank's due diligence, it had to address all the all the issues that were um, that Aboitis, the Aboitis group, was being confronted. Ever since uh, Annabel came in, 
I had already told her, there's been enough litigation already. This has been litigated 50 years ago. When we came in, uh, people were dealing with each other as enemies, as adversaries. And plus, there were some animosities, uh, emotional uh, animosities. So our role was basically to diffuse this and to put them in a frame of mind where they will talk and they will express themselves from the heart. We asked them, who do you think should be on the table? So we didn't tell them who should be on the table, we asked them. And so they um, uh, named 10 groups. This included the um, National Power Corporation, the uh, Private Sector Assets and Liabilities Management Group, of course, SN Aboitis, two municipal governments, two barangay governments, two indigenous people's organizations, and the office of the governor. First of all, we want to level the skills of negotiations. Secondly, uh, in the process of capacity building, we wanted them to, we want to put a face to each of the stakeholders, that it's not just a group of people that they're talking to. Now there are particular physical people in there, and they are getting to know them. And they're going to know them personally. They're going to call them by their first names. We thought that we needed to um, capacitate them with skills in collaborative negotiation. So this was how we put together this program. We had one rule that says nobody gets to be wrong, which means I will listen, and I will not debate, and we will not accept uh, we will not tolerate any debates because we, we, uh, they acknowledge that everybody's opinion is valid and has some value. One of the other rules is empty your cup, which means, uh, well, uh, forget all your prejudices, just listen, empty your cup, uh, listen to what is being said, try to understand it, and later on, you can make a choice whether to accept it or not. In our first day of training, they asked us to go to the other side. And uh, in going to that other side, you must, you must find your way to go there. But the rule was you cannot copy a mechanism that has been done before. All right? So everybody has to invent his own way of getting across the room. I think I was the first one. And I did a dance to go to that location. The rule was if it has been done before, people, at the, the ones who have crossed, can turn you down and you have to go back. And then the next one is the mayor, and he did a dance as well. So he did it in an indigenous way. That is our uh, indigenous way of solving problem. So I have to decide whether that's okay or not. So I, I turn it down. One of the indigenous people said uh, that they were hurt, that this was turned down because this is their way of expressing themselves normally. So I got angry. I got mad. <laughs> I got mad. The people were mad at me. They were telling that uh, I was not so sensitive about their culture. And uh, I, I turned down their mayor. But then I explained to them that the reason why I, I said no is that it's, it's also a dance. So I was with the impression that since I did the dance and he did the dance, so it's not acceptable. And the argument was getting heated. And I go to the extent of <laughs> telling some uh, hurting words. And then I stood up and told my, and told what is inside of me. And after a couple of uh, minutes, they, begin, they began to understand each other's point. 
I've explained to them and I've um, made, made amends with them. And we're good friends now. As if my anger or the wounds that I am holding was little by little uh, removed or uh, cast out by that capacity building. There was such a huge change even in the corporate people. After the training, they came to us and said, you know what? Before these people wouldn't talk to us. After the negotiation training, they said that was the time the dynamics totally changed. The connection started to happen. Aboitis came to know that uh, this is the traditional people, these are the customs and traditions. You know, we had a rule on being late, all right? And if you, if you were late, uh, you would be sanctioned by dancing in front of the class. And so uh, a person would be very ashamed to be dancing in front of uh, the, 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 the group. And then on the fifth day, when we started, so we were there at 9 o'clock sharp, and there was no one there. All, all decided to be late. So when we came in on the fifth day, they all decided to be late. And then all of a sudden, they all came together. They said, we all decided to be late because we're all going to dance. Uh, on the last day, uh, everyone wanted to dance already, so everybody wanted to be late. And so, of course, we put on the music and they were having so much fun. And, you know, that was, this, that was really a show of camaraderie among them, which also uh, showed that there was already a, uh, you know, the beginning of unity, that they could already talk and um, agree on something that all of them were interested to do. We thought that at least now they have accepted each other, that they are not only uh, acquaintances, but friends. In fact, the two people who debated on the, on the indigenous dance uh, became text mates. All right? I, I think up to now they are texting each other. We learned about how to settle disputes also. It is an additional skill for us. And then during the process, um, we were able to build friendship. I have now the respect for them. Before, uh, conflicts were actually treated as such uh, and were dealt with in a hostile, adversarial manner. And uh, the workshop opened up possibilities in sitting down, uh, understanding the position of the other party, in empathizing with the position of each of the stakeholders, and really being open and transparent about what each party feels and what each party can bring to the table for the solution of the conflict. First of all, we uh, identified the issues that they wanted to talk about. What we did was we uh, talked to, to the different groups uh, individually. We would split them up and ask their positions on these various issues. And then when we see that there are connections, that there, are, there is common ground, then we see this as a possibility for creating certain provisions. Uh, until um, at the very end, uh, I think we were down to maybe only about two or three issues that were not resolved. By the end of the seven months, we were able to put everything into one agreement. We put everybody together in one room looked at the, uh, the proposed agreement, made uh, the changes that were acceptable to everybody, gave them all their, uh, their drafts of the agreement, and then asked them to bring it to their principals. And we said, what was the meaning of lad to you? And they said three things. One, recognition and respect for our culture. Secondly, opportunity. And the third was security. Respect means museums, bringing back the graves of our uh, ancestors, documenting our literature, our music, our dances, so that people, so that our young people will know it, will learn it, and we will never be forgotten that we are the originators of this land. And then 
for opportunity, they talked about livelihood, about um, education and training, uh, infrastructure. Talked about security, they said they wanted to make sure that they can preserve the water, the forest, the trees. Actually, it all came from them, the people, the indigenous people. They were the ones who, who, who presented whatever uh, items that would uh, appear in the MOA. Doors were opened. People were willing to, to talk and listen. And every time there is a particular problem, people now knew the forum or the structure. They, can, they know where to go to talk to uh, the people that needs to be informed. We're not operating for the day. We're there for the next 50 years. It would be to our best interest to, to have good relationships with, um, with the local community. We should also look the uh, other sides. For example, uh, we'll not just raise our concerns. We'll also understand the company, if what it could be possible, what is doable. Someday, somehow, we'll realize these dreams and uh, um, make our community a progressive one. So we established, uh, organized that uh, Colos Festival with the help of SN uh, The Without their sponsorship, that Colos Festival have not started. We supported our cultural dances, so we acquired a cultural instrument. So we started training kids to perform uh, cultural dances. The first would be actually going there and sitting down with the people in the community. You can't do your social responsibility from the boardroom. You actually have to have people go there and see what, what the situation is, right? The mechanism that we provided um, allowed a process where all of them will be talking. And by doing this, uh, they know that they're able to shortcut the, the kind of conversations that they have to do. The second would be, uh, not being too pompous as a corporate uh, personality. There comes a time when you cannot do it by yourself. The third would be communication. It's um, always good to talk. It's always good to have a dialogue and listen to the sentiments of the people. Corporations have begun to realize that social responsibility is really uh, meant for increased productivity and shareholder value. We get CSR right, makes the, my role as CEO much, much easier. Um, if, we, if, if, if we operate in, um, in a, say, quote-unquote, host, hostile environment where we are not accepted or we have issues with, um, with IPs in the local community, if we have issues with the, with the government, that takes a lot of management time to fix, and um, that, that affects the morale and uh, um, um, demotivates um, employees. One of the um, key measures is actually if we have made a difference in the lives of the communities, uh, of the people within the communities where we operate, then we can say that we have made it, we're successful. I have now the capacity to accept what was already the, uh, done to us in Daijinos. And also that company, they also understand what is the responsibility. They have now the capacity to build the relationship between us and them. There's a continuous uh, negotiation. Con continuing, continuing consultation. 
I think we have successfully established ourselves not as a company, but as a neighbor in the community. Many people think that once you reach an agreement, it's a panacea, it's a magic wand. Everything is going to be transformed the following day and we will live happily ever after. But a memorandum of agreement or any peace agreement is like a marriage contract. You don't sign a marriage contract and expect that you will live happily ever after. You need to know that that contract that you sign is something that you will have to negotiate for the rest of your life. I think this is what is happening in Ambuklao Binga. We had a good agreement, but it is not the end of it. There will be many, many agreements that they will have to make throughout the rest of their lives to make the community that they want to envision. Ni dangit sakit tantu o era Pinar suampa isyaga tanti lapia Tanamin jawar dabaw ni isyaga Ni mana aku sejauh entah Tepen semak mu akja pasia Ankananan basulak ni mimpi An sama sama mo aklanta Hesus Kristus jar menubutku Si kami put put no japu in ahan moy biag mo suni hoju bayad ni basul ni aminatu espiritu santo jasiloku Si kami mengira dan aksu Amina salanku tandaganku Madapu sun si kamsi yusku Itu show it put on shall and go. Elisima, she panga uanko. I shall solely soak she be a go. Si kami kadwak daun da bansu Itagi ko iya takday ko Siya yaw ko sumsika mo apu Tep si kami ang ikan ni biyag ko Si Usta Haja ay si Pangin ka anto Salamat sunsikam si Usta po That's the end of my song.